you know, Tom, it's very funny that there haven't been any calls for you. What? Well, you've been promoted to detective a whole week now and no word from Scotland Yard. <laughs> there must be some case that has all their experts baffled. Are you looking for these? Oh, thanks. Yeah, I bet the word's rolling through the corridors of power right now. Hmm. Send for Tom Patterson. <laughs> Oh, uh, Detective Constable Tom Patterson. Cut it out, Frosty. <laughs> well, after all, you solved the case of the vicar's missing lawnmower. Brilliant, incisive, forensic thinking, that was. You honed right in on the garden shed where he forgot he'd left it. Huh? <laughs> Ooh, hoo -hoo. That's wishful thinking. What do you mean? Well, if we did get a case like this, do you think the superintendent would let you handle it? Why not? No, Tom, what you've got to remember is... To get on, you have to avoid treading on too many toes. Huh? Good morning, Miss. Can I help you? Voices. Pardon? I want to report. I want to report a murder. I've committed a, a murder. Murder? Yes. Where? In my house. Where's that? I don't know. It's some. I don't know. Now, what's your name, Miss? What? Your name. What is it? Come on, Miss. You'd better tell us. I don't, I don't know. I can't remember. I don't know. I All can't. Right. Okay. I can't remember okay, anything. Miss, come on. Come on. We'll go in here. Now. Sit quietly, eh? Uh, just, just sit down there. Right. Well, could you ask Dr. Summers to get here as soon as possible, please? Yes. Yes, a woman. No. No, I've no idea who she is. Well, neither has she. Remember your name? No, I can't. I'm sorry. All right, then let's. I was going to say let's forget about it for a minute. What about the murder? Murder? Yes. You came in to report a murder, a murder you committed. Tell me about it. Midnight. Midnight. Is that when it happened? The voices. Voices. Yes. It has to be midnight. She'll be alone, then. She? What do you want? I thought you might like a coffee, Miss. Oh, that's fine, thanks. Well, go on, Frosty. I'm handling this. Oh, yes, Detective Constable. You said she, a woman. You murdered a woman. Jill. Jill? Who's Jill? She's blackmailing him. Blackmail? Is that why you killed her? Because she was a blackmailer? Ali. What? Is that where it happened? In an alleyway? Ali. What, an alleyway in this town? No. In the house. It happened in the house. All right. Take your time and tell me how you did it. Tell me exactly how you did it. Just before midnight. There's a call. It's an important meeting. Yes. He has to leave. That's the alibi, you see. He has to leave because he mustn't be involved. And then she'll be alone in the house. No telephone. Nothing. She'll be quite helpless. But you just said you had a call. We cut the wires after the call. She'll be quite helpless. And then? On the last stroke of midnight, break the lock. It has to be then, the very last stroke. But why is the time so critical? It isn't the time, it's the clock. It's, it's old and weird and, and, and 
on the last stroke of 12, it goes crazy. It makes a lot of noise. Enough noise to cover the breaking of the lock. We keep meaning to get it fixed. But why do you have to break the lock in the first place? Don't you have a key? But it has to look like a break-in. A burglary. In the study, there's a lot of glass. It's very valuable. Some of it's worth thousands. We s steal some and make it look like a robbery. And then very gently up the stairs, turn the switch. Oh, God, the music's so loud. Music? What music? It's Bartok. It, it has to be Bartok because that's the loudest. It's loud enough to cover everything. A screams, you mean? Is that what you mean, a screams? God, the voices stop. Why will they go away? I don't want to hear them. I don't want to listen. How did you do it? You killed this girl, this woman, Jill, whatever her name is. How? How did you do it? With the poker. And who's the man? The one who was established the alibi with the telephone. The one who she was blackmailing. Who is he? Hello, Tom. Got here as soon as I could. I wish you had a slower car. Hmm? Hmm? Nothing. So this is the little lady who can't remember anything. Oh, she remembers a lot. But not her name. I see. Look, can I stay? Sorry. Outside. Look, she's been talking about a murder. Her medical well-being is the first consideration. Okay. Oh, Tom, hmm? congratulations, by the way. What for? Your promotion to detective. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks a lot. All sewn up. Young Patterson strikes again. It seems so worked out, well planned. Break-in, alibi, poker. Darling, aren't you going to... Frosty, anything new? Just a tiny murder, Superintendent. Murder? Well, a report of one, anyway. Uh, young Patterson's handling it. Oh, he is, is he? Well, you better tell me all about it, didn't you, lad? That's totally improbable. Well, she believes it. Well, she might. It doesn't mean I have to. Fake break-in, murder. Any break-ins reported after midnight? Well, I don't know. Well, you didn't think to check it. Eh? I didn't get round to Frosty? it. Frosty? No, nothing, sir. There you see. Well, Doc. She's definitely amnesiac and suffering from mild concussion, too. But there's no sign of bruising. She'll come out of it pretty soon, be able to remember everything. Including the murder? Ah, oh, yes. Tom told me about that. Well, what do you think? Uh, uh, just a I minute, just a minute. What's your opinion, Arthur? Could she be telling the truth? It's possible. I doubt it, though. She had a bump on the head. She could do or imagine anything. Imagine, there, you see. But she seems so definite. Hard luck, lad. Any idea what caused the concussion? Fall, car accident. That's what I was trying to tell you. I just found an abandoned car, skidded off the road about a mile back. Nobody in it, nothing. Just this book.
<laughs> What's up? Take a look. Mrs. Drew. We know who you are now. Mrs. Drew. You see, there's a photograph of you and your husband. We've contacted him. He's coming to collect you. Do you remember who you are now? Mrs. Drew. Mrs. Betty Drew. Your husband's a famous author. Even I've heard of him. And I don't read detective novels. Well, you ought to. I've read that book, Mrs. Drew. As a matter of fact, I'm a big fan of your husband's. You wouldn't like the plot much, though, Patterson. You heard it before. It concerns a husband and wife for murder or blackmailer. Is that all it was? Just a plot? There never was a murder. The voices. What about these voices, Mrs. Drew? I'm tired. The doc said to let us sit quiet. Just until your husband arrives, Mrs. Drew. Murder her at midnight. It seemed real at the time. She made it seem real. Didn't you know that the fiction is always more real than fact? Ah, it's Mr. Drew, isn't it? I'm Superintendent Terson. How's my wife? Oh, she's fine, fine. The, the doctor's given her a sedative. The car's all right, too. Oh, never mind about the car. Where's Betty? She's in here, sir. See, it's all coming back now, isn't it? I'm uh, sorry to have given you all this trouble. No trouble at all, sir. It's a great pleasure to meet you, Mr. Drew. I've read all your novels, you know. Yes, sir, you give me many happy hours. Thank you. Read them all except the latest. I haven't been able to get a copy of that one. I'll get uh, Jill to send you one. Jill? Who's Jill? My secretary. remember anything except last night. Last night? Well, we did have dinner here last night, didn't we? Yes, indeed we did. Come on, come to bed. Remember me, don't you? George. George. Man you married. A man who loves you. Hmm? Come on, you come and lie down. You lie back. And uh, I'll get you a nice cup of tea, huh? Down, back later. You think you can hold the Fort Patterson? Just sit back, relax, and uh, read a good book. <laughs> hey, you can laugh. Well, you know what they say? Laugh and grow fat. Frosty? Mm. Suppose there had been a murder, like she said. Oh, well, there wasn't, Tom. If there had been a, a break-in, or a murder, would have heard about it by now. Yes. Unless it was planned. 
but something went wrong. Or well, perhaps it didn't happen. What do you mean? Well, you saw it when she came in. She was half dazed. Oh, she'd been in a car crash. Yes. But where was she going so fast that the car skidded off the road? And anyway, we've all assumed that it was a car crash that shook her up, haven't we? Suppose it wasn't. Suppose it happened before that. Before? Yes, they planned to murder a girl named Jill, didn't they? Now, there is a girl named Jill. Yeah, oh, come on, John Jill. The, the murder did go as planned, but then she panicked. She jumped into the car. And he just let her go, I No, suppose. no, he didn't, no. She'd taken the car, so he had to go back. What for? To cover up, hide the body. Listen, if George Drew ever runs out of plots, I can tell him where to come. You really can't remember anything at all. Well, you'll get some rest and we'll talk about it later, huh? What are you doing? Well, oh, I uh, finally got around to storing those old reference books. And you ought to be resting. Where's Jill? Well, you know quite well she... Well, perhaps you don't. Well, she went out to see her brother or something. Come on, back to bed. George, look, I don't remember a thing about the last 24 hours. Well, possibly you never will. That can happen, you know. But I can assure you there was nothing particularly exciting. But if there was, I'd remember. I don't know. Not sure. Look, if something perfectly terrible happened, I would remember, wouldn't I? Where are you off to? I just thought I'd take a look round Drew's place. And what about when the superintendent gets to hear of it? But he won't, will he, Frosty? Hello, Mrs. Drew. Do you remember me? Yes, of course. Come in. Thank you. I'll only stop a minute. I was just passing. I just wondered how you're getting along now. Well, 
That's a kind thought. Deserves a drink at least. Thanks. What do you have? Uh, Scotch, Mr. Uh, Patterson, Tom Patterson. Yes, yeah, Scotch is fine. That's a nice collection of glass you've got here. Some of it must be very valuable, I think. No, all of them are valuable. And a couple of them priceless. Thanks. It seems vulnerable here. You don't worry about burglars, then? Oh, I do. Now, look at it this way. The world's full of worries. The H-bomb, burglars, crossing the road, cirrhosis of the liver. I just put the worries behind me and trust to luck. Cheers. Cheers. Casing the joint. Ah. Don't forget, cops and robbers are my business. I'm sorry, it's just a habit. Good one if you're a policeman. And what conclusions have you come to? You're a writer. <laughs> Brilliant. It pays well. And you worry about taxes. Who doesn't? I don't. I don't earn enough. <laughs> you're lucky. I earn a thousand, they take away nine hundred. Yes, I keep that little place in Bermuda. It helps spread the load a bit. And a wife. That's right, darling. That's the only reason I married you. Pure financial necessity. <laughs> She's right, though. It does help. Yeah. Companies in your wife's name and that kind of thing. I thought you didn't worry about taxes. Well, I don't. But I spent some time with the fraud squad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Want another drink? No, thanks. It is perfectly legal, Mr. Patterson. Oh, yes, I know. Have you remembered any more about the murder yet? Murder? Yes. When your wife came in, she confessed to a murder. She what? Tell him. Darling, is that true? Yes. I was just confused. Well, I'm not surprised living with me. Professional mayhem maker. <laughs> you know, we even discuss murder at breakfast. <laughs> yes, well, I must be going. Thanks for the drink. Oh, um, uh, Jill. Jill? Yes, the inspector wants to ring her, remind her about the book that she promised to send him, but he doesn't know her second name. What is it, please? Pembry. It's Jill Pembry. Jill Pembry. Thank you. Bye. Thanks again for the drink. It's a pleasure. <laughs> I must get that thing fixed one of these days. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. No, I'm not going to do it. Frosty. Look, the case is closed, Tom. Closed. Oh, come on, humor me. What harm can it do? Please. 279-415. I'm only doing it so you'll stop this once and for all. Huh? Miss Pembury? Uh, no, I'm afraid she isn't here at the moment. Who is this? Oh, this is Social Security, sir. We have a query on Miss Pembury's documents. Uh, something we can handle over the phone, save time. Uh, could you tell me when she'll be back, please? No, I think she went to see a relative and uh, then on to the hairdressers. I have no idea. Yeah, oh, I, I see. Well, come on. I wonder if you could help us, sir. Uh, could you tell me Miss Pembury's current address? Yeah, she lives in Carlington. Um, what did you say her name was? Hello? So, she's not there. Very suspicious. Yes, it is. It's very unusual. Yep. Come on, we'd better get three squad cars and go and right. break the door in. No, no. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but I will check a little further.
What are you playing that for? Hold oh, no. on. You can't have forgotten that. Bartok in the bath is my favorite luxury. But that's just a bit loud, huh? Yeah, how's that? Okay. I told you to drop it. Please, just George listen. George Drew is an influential man. You mess about with Look, his private life. I've been lights. to the house. Yes, without my permission. Look, sir, there are things there she talked about. The glass, shelves full of it, and the clock that goes strange at 12. I've seen them, and they didn't come out of a book. How'd you like to be back on the beat? Well, I'll chance it. I'll stake my instinct against this. A clock? Glass. And Jill Pembry, the girl they plan to murder. No, don't start all Look, that. Look, she exists, again. but she isn't around anymore. What? Drew said she went to the hairdressers, so I checked everyone in the area. Paul's hairdressers know her very well. She goes there regularly, but not today. She didn't have an appointment today. Oh, come so on. So then I checked the Carlington directory. Jill Pembry's got a flat there. The caretaker hasn't seen her for two days. What do you think, Frosty? Well, we've known stranger things. Are you certain about that? Yes. The caretaker hasn't seen him? I spoke to him personally. Look, I don't understand. What is this you about Jill? Jill, sir, when we've had a chance to talk to Miss Pembry. Well, it may be ages she went out. When, sir? This morning. Look, I know the virtues of cooperating with the police, but I'm beginning to get a little impatient. Now, what is this about Jill? We want to see her, sir. We insist. You insist? I know where she is. This doesn't concern you. I know where she is. Well, could you know if I do? I'll show you. My wife isn't herself. The key. Darling, you're not well. The key. What do you want the key for? I want to find Jill. Are you saying Miss Pembry is in there? Open it, George. You're not well. Well, you know perfectly well. Do you she's... have a key to that cupboard? Yes, of course well, I have. Well, if you wouldn't mind. What kind of investigation is it's this? It's no good, George. They know. I, I told them. They know what? It'd be easier if you open the cupboard, sir. We can break it open. All right, you open the thing. Expecting to find. I thought. Jill! Aren't I going to be introduced? Are you Jill Pembry? Yes. What's going on, George? I don't know, but I'm waiting for an explanation. It's a mistake, sir, a very bad mistake, isn't it? I'm sorry, sir. What kind of a mistake? 
I thought Miss Pembry was missing. Missing? But, George, didn't you tell them you'd give me some time out? Yes, I did, but I don't think they believe me. Glad you came back, anyway. Well, of course I came back. I had to see my brother in town, and while I was there, I had my hair done. I can't apologize enough, sir, if you wish to lodge a complaint. No, to... just forget it. Just forget the whole thing. You might, sir, but I won't. Hey, Frosty. Oh, don't go in there for Pete's sake. Not unless you've got fireproof ears. But I left my stethoscope in there. Oh, I think it'll be safe. I mean, if the superintendent hits him, he'll use his fists. Oh, hello, Arthur. I thought you'd be back for that. Thanks very much. Uh, I'll be at home if anyone needs me, Frost. Sure. But uh, just make sure if I am called that it's for something with facts behind it. Yes, sir. Uh... Ah, the eagerness of youth. Not new to us, is it, Frosty? Well, it's perfectly natural. Give you a hard time, did he? <laughs> you know, Frosty, I think he's suffering from shock. <laughs> well, I shall have to prescribe something. How about a drink? On me. Come on. Doctor's orders. Thanks. George, tell me about your accident. That was awful. How are you feeling? I'm all right. Sure there's nothing I can do or get you? Nothing. All right, then. That was crazy about the murder. George, tell me you confessed to murder. Who did you think you'd murdered? It was silly. It was just a mistake. <laughs> I must have been out of my mind. Well, literally. I'm embarrassed about it now. Well, obviously the police didn't take you seriously. I mean, you're still at liberty. Oh, yeah. You sure you're all right? Yes. Jill, why don't you take a holiday? What? Well, just go away from here for a couple of weeks. It'd do you good. But I've already had my holiday this year. Don't you remember? Uh, no. I, d I don't remember everything. Look, get some rest. Let's go and sit by the fire, Doc, eh? Good. Oh. What do you want? A bottle of stout? Yeah, thanks. I tell you, I won't be blackmailed like this any longer. I've already put up with it for too long. I was a fool to believe you in the first place. A man can be pushed just so far, and then he starts to fight back. Starts trying to do something about it. It's coming along fine, isn't it? What? George's new book. How he turns them out, I'll never know. But he always does. And always on time. It's careful planning. Meticulous attention to every detail. That's right, isn't it, darling? Night. Hi, darling. Where have we got to? Oh, I, I was a fool to believe anything she told me. Murder, blackmail. Look, it wasn't your fault, really, you know, Tom. You took her too literally and she led you astray. She probably regrets it now. So do I. Well, that type always do. Neurotic. They do or say something wrong and take the whole burden of guilt upon their own shoulders. One of nature's born sufferers. Oh, 
hollow voices. Hmm? I don't know what you meant by that, hollow voices. She didn't mean anything. Her mind was addled. She was all mixed up. Well, they haven't killed her yet, anyway. Killed who? Jill Pembry. They were planning to kill her, you know. Come on. What are you doing? I've got a prescribed for you. You're not driving, are you? No. Good. Nice brisk walk in the fresh air will do you good. Listen, as from tomorrow, I'm going to get all the fresh air I need. Millet, 21 Culbert Cottages, claims there's a submarine in a duck pond. Look into it, will you? What? Public relations, Dad. Off you go. Owen Patterson. Sir? I shall expect a report in triplicate, of course. Yes, sir. You mean very hard on him? Yes, I know. He's a good lad. And basically, he's a good copper. Basically an excellent one. But he has to learn, Frosty. We all had to. He's been on the beat for two weeks now. Another couple and I'm bringing him back inside. Oh, I But see. don't you tell him. You give him one hint. Now, don't you threaten me, Superintendent. Just remember, I'm the one who makes the tea around here. Were you going out tonight? No, I don't think so. I thought a quiet dinner at home, all right? Yes, finally. No. Yeah, she's around somewhere. Hold on. Who is it? It's for John. Jill? Jill? It's Ali on the phone for you. I'll take it in the study. Ali? Annie, Alan, Jill's brother, you know. Well, maybe you don't. I don't think you've ever met him. Anyway, he's the black sheep of the family. Ali. What? Is that where it happened? In an alleyway? Ali. An alleyway in this town? Yes, Annie. I understand. He's in town tonight. Police, hello? Hello? Can I speak to Mr. Patterson, please? Who is this, please? It's, um, it's Mrs. Drew, Mrs. Betty Drew. Oh, yes, Mrs. Drew. Well, I'm afraid Constable Patterson isn't here at the moment. Is there anything that I can do? Um, no, no, thank you. Uh, shall I ask him to call you back? No, really, it's not important. Is he? It's not important, really. Uh, shall I tell him that you... Did you have a vital, energizing day? Yes. Two parking tickets, one lost dog, and a grim fracas in the main street. Bad? The protagonists were armed. Eh? Both of them with water pistols. Yeah. They felt the strong hand of the law on their backsides. <laughs> Is there any coffee in that pot? Yeah, I'll pour you some. Oh, no. Tired. Tom, mm? there was a call for you. Huh? That was his Drew. What did she want? Mm -hmm. Unimportant, she said. Why did she call in the first place? I don't know. Did you want me to call her back? No. Well, I think I'll just Tom, find out. it's going to be winter soon, a cold, hard winter. Do you like pounding the beat in the cold? What time's the library closed? 
Mm. About another half hour, I suppose. Why, ah, what do you want the library for? Tom? Night, Betty. What are you staring at? Oh, I wasn't staring. Just admiring. George Drew, his wife, Betty. Successful? Printed in 14 languages. My Working Methods by George Drew. Take all the unrelated elements of the plot, write them down, mix them up, and put them together piece by piece like a jigsaw puzzle. Well, if it's good enough for George Drew, it's good enough for me. I didn't mean to wake you up. Uh, you still on duty? Yeah. Ah. Cyril's wedding anniversary. Hmm? I said I'd stay over until he got here. Yeah, yeah. Could say the same to you. It's not my wedding anniversary. No. I'm not even married. <laughs> I mean, you went off duty ages ago. I will. I came back, didn't I? <sighs> oh. What are you looking for? That report I made on the Drew case. Oh, Tom, now, come no, on. It's purely academic interest, Frosty. Purely academic. I promise yeah. Speaking. Look, old boy, do you know what time it is? Well, couldn't it wait till the morning? Well, I wouldn't be there till after midnight.
What is it? Oh, it's that uh, American publisher. He's flying out at 2 a.m. wants to see me before he goes. These are? Yeah, that's what I said, but it's important. He, uh, he wants to sign that serialization deal now. Could mean a lot of money. Worth a trip to see him anyway. Hmm. Night. You want some coffee, lad? Mm. Mm. That's right, you sleep it off. It's been a hard week. Mm. Alibi's all arranged, isn't it? Ali's standing by. But George. You're sure he's reliable? Ali. He'll swear you were with him from midnight until tomorrow morning. He has to. I've got too much on Brother Alan. And the car? Parked right behind the trees. No one can see it. Darling, you are sure? Yes. I still wish you got it off. No. Coffee, Frosty. Oh, the sleeping beauty awakes. No, don't move. I just want to drink you in. Coffee. Black.
George. We don't have to. We do. Divorce. No, it's not possible. Even if she agreed, it's not possible. Betty and I are inseparable. Financially, we are inseparable. No. This is the only way. Hold me, darling. Hold me. Tell me you love me. I love you. I love you. Thanks for the coffee. Good night, Tom. See you, Frosty. What's the matter? Assumption of guilt. Eh? She didn't say that. It was Summers who said that. Doc Summers, he said that. Assumption of guilt. What's his telephone number? Whose telephone number? Summers, what's his number? Well, he won't thank you for calling him at this time. Look, it's nearly midnight. I know, that's why I want to call him. What is it? Doc, it's me. Patterson, Tom Patterson. Is it an emergency? Emergency? Well, it might be. Look, I know it's late, but I just had to clarify something with you. Oh, not at this hour. No, 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 don't hang up. You remember a couple of weeks ago you examined that woman, Mrs. Drew? Who? Drew. That's right, yes, the one who got me busted. Well, you remember when you examined her, you said that she was a highly strung. The sort of woman who might assume guilt, neurotic. Well, look, Doc, suppose a woman like that heard a crime being planned that involves someone she loved very much. What might she do? Panic. Well, that'd fit, wouldn't it? And then suppose she had a bad bump on the head. Well, that'd mix it all up, wouldn't it? Yeah. She'd come out only half remembering, perhaps not even wanting to remember anything at all. She might then assume the guilt, mightn't she? Take the guilt on her shoulders, pretend it was her. Well, thanks, Doc. I'll talk to you again. The superintendent will eat you alive after he's roasted you. Take your time and tell me how you did it. Tell me exactly how you did it. Just before midnight. There's a call. It's an important meeting. Yes. He has to leave. That's the alibi, you see. He has to leave because he mustn't be involved. And then she'll be alone in the house. No telephone. Nothing. She'll be quite helpless. But you just said you had a call. We cut the wires after the call.